YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gallop Racer 2004. <clears throat> I actually haven't played this game in about a month. Been playing, obviously, everything else. It's nice to get back to it. Um, we still have a lot to uh, get through before the end of this year. 23 years, about to turn into 24. Crazy. Gotta be honest, sometimes it doesn't feel like I've been playing this particular playthrough of the game this long, but it has. King B is up today in a grade two. And um, I believe a couple episodes ago he got his first win. He's gotten actually uh, a couple of wins. So King B seems to be on a roll. Second favorite here today in the field of 14. Who's the favorite? Dear Son? Well, of course. Yeah, King B, he's, he's really been solid for us. And um, really uh, liking what you know productivity we have been getting out of him. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. All right. So let's rock and roll with King B. And let's see if we can get the win. Because if they got us as the second favorite, we can definitely win. So. Tender value. Great horse. It's a horse that Basic Blue um, actually used in one of his later episodes. Uh, whatever day I upload this. I think it was episode... Uh, I can't remember the number, but... Remember, tender value one. Nice race there. Good horse. Good horse. So, good start for King B. As always, he gets out pretty well. I like horses that are easy to run with in this game. Like, some horses, I know they're great and people want me to use them, but, like, I, I just feel like the way they ride would annoy me. And that's the thing. Some horses I just won't ride just because I just feel like it's just not the way I want to play the game, you know? Even if they are great. So. No, we're on the rough, but whatever. Let's get off. Let's get off. Let's get off. Oh, wild. He's going wild. Focus. Focus, B. Focus. Gonna move over. F5 is coming. That is Dear Son. It's us and Dear Son battling. I think Dear Son is gonna get us. Yeah, King B got distracted for a second. There's nothing I can do. Fair play. Fair play. I didn't actually expect him to kind of get a little bit upset. And, um... Did he not want to be whipped at the time? My spurt was double S. I mean, I, did, like, I, I thought I did all I could do there. But, um... Surely could have won. Yeah. But I don't understand, um... What I did that upset him. Onyx Prince, the favorite here today in a G3. That's what I like to see. So, P2. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. That happens sometimes. I've realized now watching other people play this game that I'm not the only one that experiences some of these things. I That makes me feel a lot better because I swear sometimes when I'm, you know, complaining about something that happens in the game I, I feel like okay maybe people don't get it and I'm the only one but like it's good to know that I'm not the only one that goes through these things just obviously because I do YouTube and I'm making videos I am going to be one of the most vocal or more vocal ones only because it's just not a lot of us doing it so um, Onyx can run him anywhere in the mid and yeah he's going to be at his peak this year well he's supposed to be as a five-year-old going into a year of being a six-year-old. Very late bloomer. Um, but yeah, like even watching Basic Blue, I, I see some of the things, you know, he goes through that uh, are similar to things that I've gone through playing the game as far as just maybe the AI or, you know, the mechanics or, or whatever happens. So... It's just good to know that I'm not alone in that regards, because I swear sometimes I do feel like I'm completely alone, and I'm like, uh, when I'm recording these videos, I'm just like, oh, people must just think, you know, oh, Eric's complaining again about something in Galbraiser. It's like, I, I think my complaints warrant some legitimate, uh, legitimate venting, so to speak. 
because as great as this game is, it, you know, those small things they they can be quite annoying to deal with, you know, more than what you would deal with in maybe other games, especially since we all, you know, love Gallup Racer, we love horse racing. You you would like most of the features to work properly, you know what I mean? So we are the favorite here with Onyx Prince, and I like where he's at right here on the outside. I think we'll have a good run, and I've kept him pretty close to the front. Not too far off the lead. I mean, we're five, six lanes back now, but we'll get the move. Stay off the rough. We know they're going to move out wide. Get him moving down stretch, going downhill. Have a nice runoff here. Nice runoff. Now, does he have last corner leader, or is that another horse I'm thinking about? No, nah, it is him. Yes. Love that ability so much, man. <laughs> that ability is so nice when you run the race as you're supposed to run it. Such a nice ability, man. So nice. And Onyx Prince showing finally that his late development is worth the wait, and it has been worth the wait. I would like to see him follow in his father's footsteps, but um, that's a tall task. He could be up for it, though. I mean, I, I like riding with him a lot. And like I said, that last corner leader ability, it, it's really easy to get. And it's it, it's really nice because it's almost like you're getting a, I mean, you're getting a, a more long-term stretch burst. You know what I mean? I feel like the stretch burst really is a burst. It's very quick, you know, and only lasts, you know, so long. But I feel like the last quarter leader ability seems to last a little bit longer in terms of the additional speed you get. So I really like that on my horses. And King B with another solid win there. Or um, Onyx Prince, sorry, not King B. Onyx Prince, solid G3 win. That's what we need. Eventually, we will um, really kind of focus on grade ones for the entire year. But I'm um, I'm building I'm building the lines and the lineage that I want. I have a lot of my own original horses, so that in itself, because we've still had to kind of grind and you know really tweak things, that that, that it's still taking a process to really start getting those you know super just. S, you know, double S tier Gallup Racer original horses, you know what I mean? And that's really my focus, and that's always been my focus in this game. So I would prefer to focus on that as opposed to just purely, you know, racing all the good horses at the same time in grade ones um, for the time being, especially, like I said, since we are still trying to get our own double S tier horses, um, you know. To race and breed from you know that is what i have been so excited about with this playthrough and um doing this for youtube is getting to a point where all of these horses you're going to see are going to have this gr logo to you know to the left of the name you know it's gonna you know that means all the horses that we're going to be using to win you know those big g1s and uh, the championships they're going to be our, our own horses not just the horses that the game gives you that are great you know, that's always been my 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 goal personally. Nielsen wants to challenge us. Um, I'm not in the mood to be honest. Could have been fair, but I I'd rather just focus on what we got going on here. But that's where I get the most satisfaction out of the game. Um, I know obviously acquiring some of the game's best horses is going to give me a better chance of having you know, even greater horses myself, but I like to experiment. I like to experiment and do different things. Um, and that's what I am attempting to do with our own Galbraiser Originals. That's how I want to have my success in the game. Um, I, I think there's more accomplishment with that when you are actually taking resources that the game gives you, which is, you know, the, the best horses in the game, your fast navies, your desert divers, your um wild weapon you, you know you take those horses and then you can use you breed your originals with your originals and then at that point the horses that you're getting are basically your creation not just the game's resources you know what i mean as far as like 
the game giving you that horse. It's like you have finally started creating your own horses to produce more of your own horses, you know. However the game allows you to do it. So Crafty Gift is the favorite here in today's Mild Champ Cup. So this should be a pretty easy win for us. I mean, this is inherently one of the easier G1s in this entire game to win. It's not, I, I never really feel like this race is challenging as long as you have a pretty solid horse that can run it. So, um, yeah, but let's rock and roll. But, yeah, th that that's what I think is really enjoyable about playing Gallop Racer is, you know, using legitimately your own Gallop Racer original horses to win the big races this is like you're no longer relying just on the great horses that the game has already provided for you you know you are making the game through its system its ai logic however it does it create new horses for you new ai horses for you based off of what you told the this ai system this computer to generate you told to take it this horse this great stud or stallion and breed him um you know with this awesome brood mare or this brood mare with a really good ability like we we the gamers are completely in control at that point of getting the horses that we want to get and that to me again is what is so rewarding about this journey and that's why you know as far as i, I think my dominance or any sort of dominance it's not quite there yet because i'm not taking that route you know what i mean i'm taking a different route of getting to that point using our own horses that that's always been my goal since the start i said i want to get to a point where every horse that we're using is one of our own originals you know what i mean because we've all had plenty of time and and um you know enjoyment playing with horses that we have grown up racing in all these games but I'm at that point now where I want that dominance to come from my own horses, you know. And revolution, uh, I like it. Um, you know what I mean. But that—that's where I want my success in this game to come from. I want it to come from my own horses, completely. Like everything that we use for breeding, racing, it's all gonna be Gallop Racer original. Oh, you know, owned, badged, trademarked. All of it. That has always been my goal since the beginning of this playthrough. Always my goal. Like, you won't see a horse that we own or, the, or that we're racing that is given to us from the game. Like, it's all going to be what we have been able to breed. That is my goal. You know, Crafty Gift makes it easy, but it's, it's an easy race, and that horse makes it even easier. So, good stuff. Good stuff. So that's my goal for to have us producing consistently producing double S ranked horses. You know what I mean? We're getting there. We're getting there. The only problem is I think we've we we've we've had great. Well, let's go ahead and look actually right now. Um, I, I would like to say that I think we've had great studs, obviously. Desert Diver, fantastic. Sedate Ruler, fantastic. Western Tiger, fantastic. Of course, Pale Fear, like any horses like this that obviously are nowhere near those top three, these are just my experimentation like breeding horses. This doesn't count for the overall goal I'm trying to achieve. You know, breeding Pale Fear with the horse is merely just out of like curiosity and seeing if we can maybe get some traits or abilities to transfer. It's literally all that is. But as far as the main breeding line that we do, all of these horses, great studs. I think they we've won horse of the year with every with, with each of these horses. I'm pretty positive we have won horse of the year with each of these guys. So, you know, that that's already two double S's and an S horse. And then when you look at our brood mares, I know we've had we've only had two Golden Monster and I think Skabot and Ant B. I I don't know. I can't recall us getting horse of the year with Ant B. Maybe we did. I, I can't recall it i know we did with golden monster and scabot or scabot but and B, i'm not sure so we've technically only gotten horse of the year with two brood mares that i know of but we we've had more than i think five at least half a dozen with the studs so that goes to show you kind of what we are lacking and 
think about it. I've lost a lot of fillies that never had the chance to become great brood mares. You know, a lot of the girls that I have acquired in this game from our breeding, I have lost just because of how the game's broken system is in regards to that. And it, it just so happened to always be the fillies. You know, that was just that's been my luck. Um, so I haven't really had the opportunity to acquire great, you know, double S ranked brood mares and keep them and use them for breeding. Now, I know I could go buy one technically if I wanted to. <sighs> I'd rather not do that. Again, it's, it's kind of the whole, you know, me wanting to have us achieve our success and win all of the important races and the big GWS and everything in the Dream Cup with our own horses. I know that's going to take much longer, but, you know, th that's kind of how I would have liked to do it. And we might actually look to see if maybe we can acquire a really good one. Crafty Gift to get him in another race. Uh, 10 furlong. What does Crafty run? 7 to 11. Turf, I'm assuming. So, um, whenever he'll be blue, we'll have him run again. Maybe not till the end of... Okay. I'll just have him do uh, this at the beginning of the year, G3. So, you know, that that's why I haven't really gone out of my way. Not to mention, you got to keep in mind, our horses, our foals that are two years, you know, that, that end up being two years old when we can finally buy them as first-timers, they cost a lot. So, you know, I, I don't really want to spend a lot of my money buying these other horses when I have to make sure I have a lot of this money to buy my own foals, you know. I think sometimes people forget that when I'm playing. It's like, I, I could buy these horses. I could buy the double S horses right from the start and I have to worry about it. But like, I am, I need to have enough money to buy my own foals, you know, my own two year olds that were breeding. Otherwise, what is literally the point in breeding them if I'm not going to buy them, you know, when they're ready for, you know, to start racing. So that that's kind of my approach. Um, that's why I won't really spend money on these. Like, I mean, like you look at all these colts. I mean, all these colts are fantastic, and you know you can get some amazing foals out of them. But we need more of the ladies. We do. We haven't had enough. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot. Violet Drama. Now, this is just an A ranked filly. She's a late bloomer, very late. So she could be really good. I mean, I'm not really familiar with her. Or Violet Violet Diana. Why did I say Drama? Where do I see? You know what? Anyways, statistically, she looks zzz, up there in the right. I mean, her speed's only 51. Her stamina's 34. She's not supposed to get better until she's, what, six years old, essentially. Six and a half. So it would have to be four and a half years of just late drama with her. But the thing is, if we acquire her now, the game can't take her away from us. They shouldn't be able to if we actually buy her. Or no, we could still actually, I think, end up, um, I'm wrong. I don't know why I thought that was the case. But she does have last corner leader. Because she's already ranked A, I'm just very curious what her development could be long term. You know what I mean? I'm very curious how great of a, how great of a broodmare she could be. You know, um, you know, once she retires, obviously, but I, I should say as she's racing, I'm curious how good of a mare she could be. Because her stats right now don't look like anything impressive at all. But I figure with four and a half years of development, speed, heart, response, and toughness could all probably reach 70. Which won't be bad. It really won't. Considering where she's at now. I think all of those could actually hit 70 or higher by the time she gets to that level. And again, if we if we can do really well with her sh and win a lot of races and big races with her, she would really be a great broodmare for us to have. I, I think, you know, and the few that we've been able to keep and use as broodmares for breeding, that's kind of been our success with them, even if they were late bloomers. Once we were in in control and in a rhythm with them you know it was very easy to win some big races so violent dr what, drama where am i don't know where i'm seeing the r i don't know why i want to call her violent drama maybe i just need to name of all that violet diana or diana depends on how you say it because I, I i've had friends named diana and diana so it literally just depends on the person. 
No, Long Beach Derby, Continental Cup. These are races I could run if there was a horse that I could just negotiate for. Or request, I, I guess I should say. Um, just to have a shot and a chance at, at seeing something. Shuggy Yuggy. <laughs> oh, man. I have not seen... It, it's ironic now I see this horse's name because of basic, um, you know, Blue's playthrough. I never really paid attention to that horse before then. Um, Brave Expert. I, I've always kind of liked this horse. Only because of his speed. He just, he's not in, in his distance. You can run him a little bit longer. And he has pretty good heart once he's actually at his max level. So I've always liked him for a solid S-ranked horse that you know you can get some good fun out of. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really want to run on any of these horses. Special Impact. So if I negotiate, I'll be able to... Okay, so what What are the t conditions? Top three? You know what? Top three is, is doable. I know I'm spending some points on his... But Special Impact already being... Well, I wouldn't really be able to race with him beyond this year. He's already past his peak. Now, has he won anything? He's won six G1s. He would merely just be to retire for breeding... Because his abilities, I like that he has grit and stretch burst. Those are two good abilities to have on a horse. Combined with his speed and stamina, basically at 80. All of his important attributes are pretty much in the 70s. So he's a pretty solid horse in that in that regard. So yeah, I'm going to give him a shot in that Continental Cup and, and see what we can do with him. Oh, you want to? Of course, you want to challenge me. Who are you racing on? Split effort, eighty-nine hards, and that your horse is at the peak. Are you kidding me? Your horse is at the peak of his racing career, and you want to challenge me and my horse, and we're on the downhill slope. How dare you? How dare you, man? How dare you? Violet Diana. Long shot, as she should be, because, well, she's not going to be a good racehorse until she's six years old, basically, at the earliest. So, that works out for us, because these races, I don't have to stress about, because we're probably always going to be, you know, you know, projected to finish last, which means our goal is going to be to finish last, or better than last. We won't have any pressure, so it's just like, I can literally just run with her, figure her out, uh, figure, you know, out how she runs, and just try to get good results. You know what I mean? Because then, like I said, once she's at her best, it's going to be a walk in the park. So, that is why I do like to still acquire horses that are late bloomers. I've noticed a lot of people don't really like to wait too long, at least from my understanding. But I, I don't mind. Because it keeps the game fun for me. Like, I like the... I like... Bouncing back and forth between racing and opens and grade threes, grade twos, and grade ones. I, I notice I, I would kind of tend to get. I think that one year in, in the game, I don't know what year it was in this playthrough, maybe like year 15 or something. I strictly. I've, I'm, I remember I raced on a, in a lot of G1s, like strictly for a majority of the season. And it was nice, but at the same time, I, I, I felt myself getting really bored really quickly. Because there was no difference, there was no change. I mean, racing some of the new, newer tracks or different tracks I didn't really pay attention to as a kid, that was fun. But just kind of the same constant grade one concentrated level of racing started to get a little boring to me. So I like bouncing around from racing the top horses in the game at grade one level to the mediocre horses you know, at grade two or whatever, you know what I mean? I, I like bouncing around from the different classes and groups of horses. So that way, you know, it, it keeps things fresh and it, it makes the game even more enjoyable for me, you know, because it's like, I'm not just getting bored playing, just racing in G twos only or, or G threes or just opens, you know, or just grade ones. So, you know, playing how I play with just kind of bouncing around with the different races I mean, the different groups of horses, even some that are late bloomers especially. So, you know, we're going to have to race them in open. They're just not going to be good enough to race in anything comp more competitive than that. But her first race, and she's already beating three horses? Two horses, my bad. So there you go.
That's what I mean. I just want to see what a horse can do when she is he she or he or she is nowhere near their best. If we can already beat two horses by two and a half lengths that easily, have a good spurt. I'm cool with that. That to me shows she will be a pretty awesome mare by the time she she hits her peak. I'm telling you, Violet Diana, Diana, however you want to say her name. I'm gonna call her Violet De Diana. Because I think that just rings better for a horse racing name. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited to see what she's going to be like at that point. And that's the good thing. We don't have to worry, worry about retiring her now. Um, you know, long-term mayor. i got to keep that in my notes because I will forget. You know, I'll, I'll come back to an episode and do the usual, why did I get this horse? Because, you know, I, I bounce around so many times in the games. And then I see horses and I'm like, why did I get this horse? There's always a reason I just end up forgetting because I don't write it down. <laughs> so, yeah, Violet Deanna, another long-term prospect. I do like some of those horses. I, I'm not going to make a, a whole time of just constantly racing on horses that are only going to be late bloomers. But I do like having them. Because it is exciting to see them progress. I told you, I'm all about the progression, man. I'm all about the grind and the progression. Taking a horse and being in last place with that horse to then being at the front of the pack and winning with that horse. That, that's a great feeling to have. That means you've actually been putting in the time to work and to get in a good rhythm with that horse and develop a consistency throughout that horse's racing career. You know, I think that's really enjoyable. So here's It's a Ghost, seventh favorite. So we're not expected to do much here today he's still statistically pretty solid man i mean from i mean his father of course at eight ruler and night breeze and i love the way he looks i mean he is that is a beautiful gray i love 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 that look so of course we're going to retire him just for you know just just for breeding appearance purposes and in, it's in itself not to mention his racing ability to complement that because i think above his racing ability is just he he's a beautiful horse I hope we could all agree to that. I think he's a pretty beautiful horse, and I think that is above his racing impacts. It's an amazing creature. So, however he finishes, I will be fine with. Because he's still won. He still had success. But yeah, I, I like having my uh, my variety in this game. Being able to bounce around from the different groups and classes, it, it does really keep things fresh. And uh, like I said, I really do like working with, with the late developers sometimes, you know. I, I like seeing their progress and, you know, how bad they used to be and then how good they can be. There's really nothing more rewarding than seeing that from beginning to end. Because there's not a whole lot of things you do in life, even... Where you get to see something literally happen from beginning to end. You can usually get in on when it's already at its best or when it's near its best. Or maybe you were there at the beginning but just nothing else. Where you can literally see something develop from start to finish. That that truly is a, to me at least, a very fun and like rewarding experience. So in this game, being able to work with horses that are statistically bad in the beginning and just not capable of winning a race and then you get to a point where you're able to dominate all the time that's pretty rewarding now i am a little bit concerned here about it's a ghost at its pace you see i feel like we've been running much further in front than i would have liked and i was trying to slow him down i, I but uh, it wasn't really working too well so i'm not sure what's even going to happen here but we'll see We'll see. Guess the field is coming now. They think they are. We have last corner leader, so we'll see. We'll see what he can do. He still got that straight line speed, but the field is coming. 12 to 13. A lot of the field is coming. A furlong left to go. He just got to hold out here, man. Just got to hold out. Just got to hold out. Don't get absolutely swamped. Oh, there they go. That's, f I think, fifth. We just hung on to fifth. Sixth. <laughs> I mean, we hit our goal, but my goodness. I had to get going, because if I would have waited to go any longer... <sighs> I still thought I should have... I still thought I should have went when I went. 
because the game is telling me my spurt was terrible, which means what? I probably should have went later to have more stamina at the end instead of going as soon as I did. Because usually on that track, if I go too late, I never catch up. I feel like I lose. I can lose that race a lot by waiting too late. So I tried not to do that, but maybe I actually went too early, you know. So yeah, I don't know. So we have another G1 here, the Continental Cup with special impact. Another race with this horse. And uh, he's already essentially at his age of retirement. So, like I said, I like his stat figures. And I like his abilities. I, I would totally use him for breeding. Because I think Pale Fear I'm only going to use for maybe like one or two lines. And I'm going to retire him. Like, I'm not going to keep Pale Fear. He was just such a great horse considering he was only a B-ranked horse that... Um, you know, I, I felt at least his heart should be taken into consideration. But like I said, that's just my kind of one one pair of horses that I use for just like breeding kind of experiments and curiosity to see, you know, if the foals could get any of those characteristics. That's really about it. So we'll retire Pale Fear probably for um, Special Impact, I would imagine. Not a great start, but we don't need one. 12 furlongs, we have to sit near the back, so he's kind of a closer, which is cool. I don't. I feel like I don't really race with closers that much anymore. Most of my horses are either mid-pack or front runners or want to be leading. I remember I used to only want to race with closers because I hated front runners so much, and now it's... I'm not going to say it's the opposite. I don't hate running with front, with closers. I just know that because of the way the AI race in this game... If you're racing on the closer, you're gonna have to do a lot of a lot more maneuverability at the back of the field to get through the field and hope that you don't get blocked on the way. Like that is an annoying thing to deal with, and I don't really miss that when it comes to closers. I don't miss having to try to navigate whether or not these sometimes idiotic AIs are gonna even realize I'm there, and lo and behold, they don't ever realize that you're there. Really, they don't. It's just a matter of whether or not they're gonna to stick to their lane or not. They, but that that's it, you know. They they don't even realize we the gamers are there. Like Tecmo completely missed out on that for most of the games. The AI just don't realize you're there. They're not smart AI like most game racing games have now, where the AI are actually properly programmed to realize when the when the player is there. You know, because like we think every everything should react to one another, and that is how it should be. But it's like the AI, no, the AI are just reacting to themselves and not even the human player that's also playing. You know? Not really. Not really. Just going to go ahead and move and just block me. You know, stuff like that. Stuff like that. The AI doesn't even really recognize that I'm there. It doesn't. But let's see what Special Impact can do in Deep Stretch. Grit is unlocked. But we're not making, that, we're not making up that much ground. I hope he can fly faster than this. I hope he can fly faster than this. I'm not seeing the speed, and there's the stretch burst, but it's going to be too late. Wow. Well, there I go talking about getting blocked, and I... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, that's annoying, because like, I kind <laughs> of locked both of the horse's abilities. Couldn't really see it. And granted, I, I, I am a little bit concerned. I have been on horses in that situation. And when an ability has been unlocked, they would fly past those horses. And we've won races like that. Golden, We did that with Golden Monster all the time, quite literally. Most of her races, because she was a closer, were won from running that exact style. So the fact that Special Impact, I think, even despite me being blocked, I had a free lane for the last two gaps. Oh, Silver said, I suggest you keep away from me, buddy. He gave me the buddy line. Silver really dislikes us now. Well, you know what? Because of that, Silver, I'm going to continue to try to race with you. You know, when a horse ever pops up, I, I do remember, like, <laughs> oh, once it gets to such a point, it's like some of their horses don't even pop up anymore. Um... Oh, Deanna, let's get her in another race. Um, but yeah. 
It is what it is, man. What are you gonna do? But I literally talked it up, didn't I? I'm like, yeah, you know. When the AI block you, and then, of course, that's kind of essentially what happens. Like, if the AI were programmed to know I was there, they just wouldn't exactly move in the gap that I'm already moving to. I mean, it's, you know, still talking about this technology 15, 20 years ago. Probably wasn't the same as it is now, quite clearly. But it is what it is. Pink Gemstone. This is our filly, our two-year-old. And we're already putting her in the Philly Cup. Now, I know based off of what I have here in my notes, she's been finishing consistently in the top three pretty much in most of the races we have placed her in. So this is her first real test at running against the gals. So we're expected to finish eighth. So I'm excited for this for her because, yeah, we haven't raced her against comp We haven't raced her against Ray One competition. So... Let's see what the lady can do. Eighth or better. I feel like I'm very consistent with her, so I, I would feel I could finish better than eighth. So that's going to be my goal here. <laughs> but yeah, that that's, that race was special impact. I, I'm sure that I could have gotten going sooner, you know, for my spurt. I'm sure I could have. But still, it is what it is. I'm sure I could have gotten going sooner. Maybe moved into a little bit of a gap. Hindsight's always 2020. It's always 2020. Sometimes that just happens. Not often, but it does. Okay, so let's get the gal to the front here. Yeah? And uh, let's make sure she gets in a rhythm, in a good rhythm. And let's please, please, can we not, can we not do a sprint to the front? Why is the a why are the AI that are like this? Like, why are you? What are you doing? Why are you so far ahead? <laughs> oh, it's so obnoxious, man. It really is. Again, another thing. I thought I was one of the only Gallup Racer gamers, you know, dealing with it. Basic Blue also <laughs> the same thing, the same exact thing. We are like, why is this a thing? You know, where they just run so fast to the front sometimes and they just want to run at that pace for more than half of the race. It just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. So we're looking good here with pink. Looking good. Now, I may have accidentally blocked the AI right there, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's see what the girl can do. Down the stretch, we come grit ability. A lot for pink gemstone. Can she dig in? Can she dig in? I forgot she had grit. I like pink, man. I like how she's running. I really do. I think we're going to finish fifth. Fifth or sixth? Fifth. Still money place finish for the lady. We were supposed to finish eighth. I figured we, we could do that with her. Like I said, she's very easy to run with. I, I just, finally, I have a filly that is good to run with. We will get her to winning grade one. She's not far off from that, I, I promise you. She's not far off. But finally, there is a filly that I have that I can legitimately be consistent with. Like, there's no doubt I'm, I'm not losing her, like, ever. I'm pretty sure I said that, like, in the previous episode. It's not losing her ever. Finally. She's going to be the first filly. You guys realize that. I don't think I don't think anybody is grasping. She's actually in this entire playthrough of this game. Pink Gemstone is going to be the first and fine and the first legitimate filly, I should say, that I will be able to race and retire without the game taking her away from me because I have not had the chance of doing that with any other of my Gallup Racer original fillies. That is bananas. It's bananas. Pink Gemstone is going to be the first. Like, that's crazy. Every broodmare that we've used for breeding has been a broodmare from the game. None of those broodmares were my original foals. Not a single one of them. At least not in this, this particular playthrough that I've been doing on YouTube. King B, third favorite here today in the Young Crown Cup. Which means we have a chance to win. we got to beat out Power Runner, who I've actually never heard of in Far Away. Yeah, King B's been on a roll, man. I mean, he's been very consistent. We should have won that grade, too, but we were close. 
Yeah, top three. If we run this right, I still don't know what his other ability. No, he has last corner leader, right? He has that ability. He has the ability. Why is it not unlocked yet? Like, am I crazy? He def. We've we've gotten that ability with him like every race, but it's still not. Sh it's not unlocked. What is that about? I have hit last corner leader with him multiple times since we've been racing with him. Why is the game still showing it as question mark, question mark, question mark? These are literally the things I talk about when I say just like, I love this game, but some of the programming, clearly, just some obvious loops. Obvious loops, man. Loopholes. Quite literally. Like, we have... Okay, man. Good start. But seriously, we've hit last corner leader with this horse several times why is the game still showing it as triple question mark that doesn't make sense it really does not there's no logical reasonable explanation it really isn't you'd have to be making something up for it to actually be logical and reasonable i would figure once you hit an ability with the horse probably two times two or three times that ability should then be unlocked. It should no longer show as a question mark. I know we have hit it with this horse more than three times. And the fact that it's still showing that it, it's unlocked is a problem. That is a concern. I mean, it's nothing obviously that I can change. But it's just like, yeah, that's annoying. It's kind of a broken thing. You're fine. He's fine. Come on, King. Come on, King. You're okay. No, you're not. No, you're not. The three is coming. The three is coming. The field is coming. I gassed you too hard. Oh, my dear boy. I'm so sorry. That's 100% on me. I went way too soon. I went way too soon. Way too soon. I went way too soon. Completely bombed that. Because we definitely could have won it. Completely bombed it. Definitely could have won it. That's really bad. So we have another G3 with Onyx Prince here. I'm just trying to move on to the next race. Because that was so bad. I don't even think it's worth marinating over. I really don't. I think I just need to accept that um, I went just way too soon. And i just uh did not think properly when it came to the stretch and that's all about that happened anyways we're off and running on to the next race here with onyx prince and yeah um the last race it was there and it's gone it was there and it's gone i think that's a good name for a fall huh it's there and it's gone I, I kind of like that. I actually think that could work. It's there and it's gone. Colt or Philly, doesn't matter. I think that's a lovely name for a racehorse, especially one that's going to be fast. Because the horse is there and then it's gone. G Come on, man. Come on. The play on words. The play on words. It's there and it's gone. I'm really going to have to remember that. That's why I keep saying it, because I can't write it down right now. I'll remember I'll remember. It's quite easy to remember. If I couldn't, then that would probably be concerning. All right, I'm gonna need to kind of get through here. Excuse me, pardon me, human player. Human player coming through. Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse me, pardon me. Thank you. Excuse me, pardon me. Human player coming through. Please recognize me. Recognize user coming through. <laughs> recognize user. Making moves. Come on, Onyx. Dig in. Dig in. Dig in. Kick away. Kick away. Kick away. Kick away. There we go. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried there, but the boys got it. See, the, what I literally did in this race is exactly what I should should have and. I was supposed to do in the last race and it just did not happen i was thinking it i wanted to do it why i couldn't execute it in the previous race um i don't know i, I can't tell you guys why i didn't execute it but literally what i just did there that's exactly how i wanted to run that previous race so i don't even I, that's why i'm just like 
that's why I said just like move on because I'm like I just completely just muffed what I was trying to do I knew what I wanted to do and I just didn't execute it it's all it is it's all it is okay Gallup World Series Special Impact still yeah 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 I'm not really paying attention we will get back into that eventually it's just not the time yet that's gonna do it for today's episode appreciate you guys I'm support on the channel as always Silver hates us he doesn't like us anymore we messed up one race with him and he's like oh you garbage get out of here get out of my sight yeah he doesn't like us anymore it's fine we don't really need Silver um I'm not too hyped on any of his horses anyways. Like even when I had a chance to form a relationship with him, I'm like, eh, I don't really want these horses. So it actually kind of works out. You don't bother me, I don't bother you. <laughs> that is how it usually works out best for me. But that'll do it. Appreciate you guys on the support on the channel as always. But until next time, Horse Racing Gamer, send it out. Hope you all have a great and fantastic day. I'll see you and goodbye. <laughs>